Hello, everyone. You are in the right place. Today's session is creating a Google Universal Analytics archive. I'm Eric Square with Data Habits. Let me see here. Today's session, we are uh, backing up our Google Analytics, uh, Universal Analytics data. For that, you're going to need the Chrome browser plugin and the Google Analytics add on for Google Sheets. Um, those are in links I sent to you before. I'm going to walk you through exactly how I do that for my Data Habits website. And I hope to have a lot of time for questions and answers. Um, in terms of next steps, there's a follow-up webinar to this on how to make a dashboard in Looker Studio uh, for this archive we're creating. So let's get started. As you know, Google Anal Universal Analytics is going away. It stopped working last summer for all of us, uh, but it's finally, you're now not going to have access to that anymore. Um, not the end of the world, but you might want to answer things like, how many people came to our website in the third quarter of 2021? And you know what was the mix of things that brought people, how much organic search, how much email, how much ads, et cetera. Those are the kind of questions we can answer with this backup. Um, this is a subset of your data, so it's top level metrics. For about the last two years, we'll see in a moment why it takes a little more work to do a much larger backup. This was the cryptic. Uh, this was the cryptic instructions that Google sent. A recommended way of archiving your data is to use a Google Analytics spreadsheet add-on, which is what we're going to do. It's a little bit complex, so I wanted to walk people through this. And I feel like this paragraph really was sort of the draw an owl version of what to do. They skip over in one paragraph, skip over some pretty complex things. And so it's that old joke about how to draw an owl, draw some circles, draw the rest of the owl. Today, I'm gonna to check the Q and A, sorry, uh, great. All right, today, First step we're going to do is find the view ID of the analytics data we want to back up. I'm gonna walk you through that, how to make that decision. Um, if there are several views that you wanna back up, you're going to have to do this process several times. Um, hopefully most people were able to get the Google Chrome browser before this call and the Google Analytics add-on. Um, I won't go through those processes. Um, but we'll make a, complet, a copy of the template sheet and I'll show you how to run this Google Analytics add-on. And hopefully I can take, as I say, questions for the last 20 minutes or a half hour. So this is what we're doing. Let's go live to my browser. And this is my Google Analytics, my old datahabits.com UA, um, Universal Analytics account. I can see that it's a Universal Analytics account because I, uh, it's got this UA-numbers-1. That indicates that it's a universal analytics account. The newer versions don't have uh, that UA- under them. So if that's my old tracking code, I have several different views here defined. Now a view is a subset of your data. You might add filters. So you know, maybe you just want to see what's happening with your Google ads. Maybe you just want to track your blog, one section of the site. So it's sort of a subset of all your data. Most of you will have a view called all website data that may or may not be the one that you want to back up. In this case, I know that this is the one I want to back up. A quick way, if you're a little bit confused, is to look at if there were any goals um, set up in that view. And the way we do that is we go to conversions, goals, overview. And then we go up here and we just change the date range. When you go there, there'll be no data, but we want to change the date range to maybe 2020, sometime in 2020. And then we hit apply. And if you, you know, if you hadn't set up any goals, it's probably not your main Google Analytics uh, account. We also want to take this step, going to conversions, goals, overview, 
to identify which goals we had set up. In my case, uh, you can see that I had set up, I don't know if that's easy to read, but goal number one, I had set up goal number two, but I didn't get any conversions. I think that was just a test thing. Similarly, goal number three, no conversions. So goal number four and goal number five. So webinar signups, email signups, and the thank you page um, goal. So these are, the, these are the goals that we're sending data to this view. And it's actually important that I take a note of that. So it's goal one, goal four, and goal five. And you'll see why in a moment, um, but this is the idea. So you know, you'll have very, you'll have a lot of different views here. You want to choose the one that you are most actively using to report, or go through this process for each of these views. I don't recommend the second one, especially if you have many, many views. So this is the uh, view that I want to back up. I go down here to the bottom, admin this little gear icon. I go to view settings and right there is this view ID. In my case, 77129278. Yours will also be a number. It won't have any letters in it or dashes. It will be this view ID. So again, that's admin, view settings, and then the view ID is right there. We take a note of that. That's step one. Next, you get the Chrome browser. I'm going to put this a link to that in the in the oops get the Chrome browser um, that's using the Q and A. Let me see if that works in chat as well. Um, let's just see. Let me know, I just put that out to the chat. Apparently, I guess it's not working, um, but that's google.com slash Chrome. Get the Chrome browser, that's Google's browser. It's required for this next step. Next, there is a slightly intimidating add-on. And now what this add-on does, it's supplied by Google. I'm gonna chat that as well and put it in the answers. This add-on, allows you to use Google Sheets to read from your Google Analytics account, and it downloads a copy of it. This plugin has been around for years, um, and it's, you know, it's probably at its final useful stage. Um, okay. Um, I don't know if those are showing up in chat or not. Let me know. Um, And so this add-on is a tool that you add to your Chrome browser, you enter some information, and it can grab data out of your Google Analytics account. You have to give it a whole bunch of permissions in that process, um, at which point it can make a copy of your Google Analytics data. So, oh, great. So those, apparently those are in the chat, great. So those two links, getting the Chrome browser and then that Google Analytics sheet add-on. I thought of removing it from my computer and going through this process of, of how to do it, but it might have just created too many technical issues. But suffice to say, when you click on that link, you will get uh, a request to install it and it'll ask you to give it permission to do all kinds of things, which are you know things like writing new sheets, access to all your Google Analytics data. Google you're giving that permission to Google. You can sort of trust it in this case. And in the worst case scenario, um, you know, after you've got your archive, you can just remove that from your Chrome browser. So that's what it is. But if you get, if you keep getting these, you know, permission uh, when you're installing that, um, understand that that's totally normal. So that's the, those first three steps. You've got a view ID, which is a number. You've got the Chrome browser, and you've got this add-on for Google Sheets. Now. After that, you are creating a template. Now, Google has one that they recommend. Um, I used it, and I find it a bit glitchy, to be honest. So I've done many, many of these backups, and I've over time, I've created one that I think is um, works for my purposes and um, 
is quite easy to use. That is this one, the data habits version. And I'm going to put that in the chat. I'm also going to put Google's version if you prefer to do that one. There's no harm in running through both of them if you're a little bit concerned about if things are working properly or not. Um, but as I say, I find the Google one a little bit glitchy at, at times. So there's the data habits version of that document. When you click on that, you should be immediately prompted to um, make a copy of that, which I encourage you to do. So either of those, when you click on those, I'll be sending all these links to attendees afterwards. So essentially what you end up with is this. Uh, if you click the first one, I'm gonna run you through the process of the sheet that um, I've worked with a lot and grown to be quite fond of. Um, and that's this one. When you open it, it'll have this name. I encourage you to give it, here, let me, actually let's, let's go through the whole version. I'm going to click And click on that, it says, make a copy. I make a copy and I give it a name that I'll recognize. Um, shorter is probably better. So I'm gonna go data habits three, data habits three UA archive. So I've created this copy, I renamed it. Shorter name, the better. In fact, you might even wanna remove the version eight, etc. beyond there. Now I take that view, so, what it, what it shows is just this single tab that is report configuration. And what you're doing here is it's all set up. Each of these columns is going to generate a new tab for you filled with Google Analytics data. So it's ready to do your bidding here. Um, all it needs is this view ID number, at which point it'll grab your data from 2021, January 1st, 2021, right up until the end of July when a lot of Google Analytics, July last year, when a lot of Google Analytics accounts stopped working. And it's gonna grab the following metrics, how many users, how many sessions, so how many visits, how many page views, how many new users, the bounce rate, the goal conversion rate, and the number of goal completions. It's gonna grab that by day. So every single day, it'll grab all of those metrics. And then by channel grouping, which is what, was how did each of those um, visitors get there? So was it organic search? Was it ads? Was it email, et cetera? So right there, you've grabbed a ton of data from January 1st till the end of last July. You know, how many users, how many visits, how many page views, et cetera, how many, you know, how often they converted. So right there, you've got a reasonable backup of your data. Now, one thing to note here, uh, Right now, you'll notice that, so it's pulling all of these things for every, every day. And one of the limitations of this method is that Google Sheets can sometimes run out of space. So not just running this report, that's not really going to happen. You could probably run this all the way back to 2010, probably, and not run out of space, maybe even longer. But some of these other reports, page views in particular, can quickly run out of space. If you wanted you know, your data all the way back to 2006, you might run out of space. So we start with just this shorter date range. And then I take my view ID, which I had told you, but have promptly forgotten. I copy it. Um, what I find is if I copy it and I put it right there in that row, view ID, I paste it there and I make sure, whoops, that's goals. Let's do the first three. Let's do traffic. This is a good way to start. The traffic, the page view, and the goals report, right? So as soon as, so these, this is all ready to go. For these date ranges, it's gonna pull these metrics and put them as tabs on this sheet below. So I go to extensions, I go down to Google Analytics and I run reports. And as you can see, I get this report status. It takes a moment, but maybe you can also see down along the bottom, it's, it's populating 
these tabs with all your data. Now this report status, three reports completed successfully. It grabbed my traffic, the date range, my page views for the date range, and my goals for the date range. Eight reports failed due to errors. Each of these reports, the view ID is a required parameter, right? I knew that. I didn't put an ID in those reports. So this is actually OK. I only expected three reports to run and three reports completed successfully. So now, if I look at my goals for every single day, I can see how many goal completions for the first five goals. I have the conversion rate and uh, the source of the traffic. So for any given day, I can understand where my goal completions were coming from. So my signups, over time, I'll be able to say what brought in the most email signups. If you recall one of my goals, these were the goals. Oh, no, they were, ah, let's go back here. My goals were, I only had five of them. They were number one was email signups in general, number Four was webinar signups, and thank you page uh, was a third one. That was probably email signups at one page at one point as well. So there's only three goals that I had defined for this site and that were recorded consistently on this site. And now that data has been uh, grabbed. The first each goal in Google Analytics has a number. You can see here goal one, and I've grabbed goals one through five. You may have up to 20 goals in a view, at which point there's a second uh, tab here. You'd put your view ID in there, and then you've got a record of goals one through 10. So let's continue on. We haven't hit the limit of this sheet yet. I don't need to put a value in goals two. I don't run e-commerce, so I'm not worried about that on my site. I'm not gonna run that report. I'm going to put it for the default channel. Now that is a slightly different view that's telling you what brought traffic to your site um, broken down by, was it social, was it email, was it ads? Campaign performance. If I use UTM tags on my email or my ads, I will wanna know what the uh, results of those were. Um, so I can see if I'm doing an end of year fundraising campaign, I can see how much traffic that brought in so we're getting sort of more granular each of these reports. I've got a source and medium, so that helps me drill down even further into my results. My landing pages, so hey, what were the most popular landing pages, et cetera. And then monthly regional, that'll be city and country, if I'm curious about that. The one thing to note is, um, Recall that I spoke earlier about how you can very quickly reach the limits of the size of these sheets. So some of these reports start to get into monthly campaign performance, and that's to kind of preserve the size of the sheets. So a little harder to report on, um, but that's also reflected in the fact that this is sort of more granular information. So for a start, you'll be you'll be pretty well served by going with traffic, page views goals, uh, and, you know, start with those three. Um, if you're, if you want your data back to about 2015, I'm finding most sites can accommodate that. Um, the page views is the one that probably creates the most. And so you might get these error messages about not enough rows. Um, but there's no harm in running this again. I've already created these, but Google will just rewrite those. So I'm running those reports again. And hopefully I expect the report status to be better, uh, have more uh, more reports run this time. I'm going to go to Q&A while we're waiting for that to cook. Um, let's see what happens. So, OK, so the eight reports completed successfully, all the ones that I expected to work. The three reports failed due to errors. I didn't enter a view ID, so I knew that those were not going to run. So there we go. So that's that's working as expected. So I encourage you to, to try this as we're here. You've got your view ID. What you're working on is this report configuration here. 
you're choosing from left to right, definitely want the traffic report. You probably want the page views report. The goals one, I'm going to mention one thing in a moment. I guess I sort of hinted at it. You can see here, these two reports, you grab goal one, how many completions there were and the conversion rate for goals one through five. This tab here grabs for goals six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now you have up to 20 goals defined in a Google Analytics view. And you may or may not, you know, you might be only using regularly goal 11, goal 17, and goal three. What you can do is come in here and edit these. You'll see here goal one completion, goal one conversion rate. Edit, it's a good idea to edit this to reflect the goals that you're actually tracking. There's no harm in, in um, you know, if there's extra goals that you're not actually using, but you want to make sure that you're you're getting your most um, important goals. The other thing is that afterwards, this gives you no indication of what that goal was tracking. So you're going to want to go back to your Google Analytics and make a note of, okay, goal one was email signups. Goal three was web or goal four, in my case, was webinar signups. And Goal five was thank you pages, which I think was also signups of some sort. Um, all right. So all goes to plan. We see these additional tabs show up, and that has our data for any given day, how much traffic, how many users, sessions, and page views came from each source. Similarly, page views we get for any given day, how many times a page was viewed, how many users viewed it, the goals we get, how many completions for any given day, we get how many completions of each goal and what the conversion rate by source of traffic was. So we can say, you know, for 2021, organic search led to this many signups and it converted at that rate. So we've got those top level metrics of our Google Analytics. You can get into some of the regional data, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do have a question around, somebody says, they're not seeing those additional tabs in your sheet. If you have gone to the report configuration, started with traffic, put in your view ID here, you go to extensions, Google Analytics, run reports, you should start to see those. Um, I don't know if there's any error messages, uh, Gwen. Um, but that's how it should work. You should get an error message about, you know, unable to, et cetera. So this gives us a raw download of our data, but it's not super useful. We're we're sort of out of the woods in terms of we can now answer questions back to the start of 2021 around how many people came to our site, what pages did they view, what, uh, how often did they convert, like sign up or donate. Um, if your website is running, doing e-commerce tracking, you'll definitely want to run that report, et cetera. Um, I've got another webinar scheduled for July to take this data and pull it into a very simple one-page Looker Studio dashboard. And that means that you'll be able to make much more sense of it. You'll be able to, to um, filter the data um, and you can sign up there. I'm going to chat the link to sign up for that. So that's sort of part two of this webinar series. Um, yeah. So let's start. Are there? Okay. All right. Great. Mm, okay. So Ashwin. Um, has a response code message is the response is too large. Now that that is probably a function of that's most often happening in the page views section. So what I would do, what I would do if you start getting that message that, you know, um, there's just too much data in, data in your Google Analytics account to give you a response. Google Sheets can't handle it. It's going to break. So I would start, I would remove my view ID from all the reports and just start with the traffic one. 
Because really, I would say, for most people's purposes, about half the value of your Google Analytics data is in some of those top line things. So back to 2021, you'll be able to tell how many users came to your site in any given day, you know, uh, how many new users, uh, what was the goal conversion rate. So it gives you a snapshot. It's a, it's a very basic start of what brought people to your website and how often did they visit. That's that traffic thing. And so if you're generating, you know, if you're getting this error message that, you know, the response is too large, start with just the first report. Um, if that is still too large, you're in trouble. I, I'm not entirely sure how that could happen, um, but you could reduce the start date. So just get, you know, the year of, you know, start instead of 2021, start in uh, 2022. Um, in my experience, this 2021 start date is actually pretty, uh, for most websites, it's um, pretty conservative. So you could try to go back to 2015, let's say, um, and then get that eight years of data, 2015 through uh, mid-2023. It's worth a try. Oops, I put 2025. That's not going to work. Um, a lot of sites I've been able to do that. And so, as mentioned, there's no harm in just running this again. It'll it'll rewrite, it'll overwrite anything, and it'll update as we go. So let's try just running that and getting a report on my traffic all the way back to 2015. So let's see, run reports. Um, similarly, page views. In some cases, if you have a lot of pages and or a lot of URL parameters, it can be a huge, and that can sort of break this. So you, that's maybe uh, one to adjust the date on. All right, so I'm seeing people having success both with sharing it and generating a report. I have the tabs now. Yes, to run it. Okay, so traffic. So again, we go to report configuration, configure the, the reports we want to grab. We go to extensions, Google Analytics, and it should be there because that's where that add-on was added. And then we run reports. All right. So let's take a quick look. That was, um, I wanted traffic. Yeah, and right there. So here it's showing me on January 1st, 2015, I had this much direct traffic. I had this much organic search. The users drop off after a certain point, um, but right up till July 31st, it tells me uh, there's a, there's a downside. The users and new users, our metric is dropping off. Let's see, new users is definitely recorded, but users tends to drop off the longer the time frame. Um, so that's not traffic report, what I expect to see for any given day, what brought people to the site, how often they converted, et cetera. Let me see, we have about 25 minutes left. Are there any other questions or people, um, let me see, q and I see 14, and I got them all, oops. So really quickly, the steps we went through, you find the view ID, it's a series of numbers of the Google Universal Analytics you wanna back up, and then list the active goals in that view and name them somewhere, keep a record of that. Get your Google Chrome browser, get the Google Analytics sheet add-on, um, those are in links I sent or on a blog post on my site. Um, make a copy of a sheet template, either the one Google provides for you or the data habits one that I've created. Um, again, those are links on, I've sent or on my blog post. And then you run the Google Analytics add-on for sheets and then check your data. And running the Google Analytics add-on means you post your view ID, the view that you want to back up in the third row of the report and across all the reports you want to generate. Start with the first three, and then you can go from there. Um, review that the goals are tracked. By defaults, one to 10 are tracked if you run those, but you might want to adjust for goals that you're more interested in keeping. Um, go to extensions, Google Analytics, and run reports, and it'll generate the data in the tabs along the bottom. So the next steps after this webinar, you've got a Google Sheet with all of your data backed up. Um, 
to your liking. And later in July, there is a, another webinar I'm offering. You can sign up here. And that is using Looker Studio to generate a dashboard for this data. It's nice to have these Google Sheets, but they're hard to read. A Looker Studio dashboard will do two things. It'll make this Google Universal Analytics data accessible. And it's also, I think it's a crucial tool in using Google Analytics 4. So join me for that webinar. It's, um, it's a quite useful tool if you consider, uh, if you're considering using Google Analytics in the future. Um, and email me with any questions or any problems with this uh, process. Um, and I hope to see you at the next webinar. Thanks.